In this example, we're going to see how we can use the definition of absolute convergence um, to actually show that a series just converges. So notice that here I have a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of sine of 4n over 4 to the n. So if we wrote out what the first few terms of this series looks like, we would have sine of 4 over 4 plus sine of 8 over 4 squared, so over 16. Or I could just write 4 squared here. Um, then when n is 3, we'd have sine of 12 okay, over 4 cubed plus sine of 16 over 4 to the 4th, etc. Okay, so we'd like to know whether these terms are actually negative or positive. So notice that for sine of 4, okay, that would be something between pi and 2 pi. Okay, so this would be um, something that's negative valued. Sine of 8 would end up being between 2 pi and um, 3 pi. Okay, so that would be positive. Sine of 12 would be between 3 pi and 4 pi. Okay, so that would again be positive. Now sine of 16 um, is going to end up being between 5 pi and 6 pi, which again puts it in this lower half here. Um, excuse me, I meant to write negative over here. So now I'm going to get two negatives in a row. Okay, so what we're just sort of showing with this here is that this is not an alternating series. Okay, it doesn't alternate negative, positive, negative, positive. We're going to get some strings of negatives and strings of positives in there. So I can't use the alternating series test on this, but one idea that I have, okay, if we recall from the definition of absolute convergence, if the sum of the absolute value of an converges, okay, then the sum of the an converges. Okay, so it might be useful to just look at the sum of the absolute value in this case, and maybe we'll be able to show that that um, is actually convergent. Oops. Then this converges here. Okay, so let's look at the sum then from n equals 1 to infinity of the absolute value of our terms. So that would be the absolute value of sine of 4n over 4 to the n. Notice that 4 to the n is positive always, so I don't need that inside the um, absolute value bars, but I do need that sine of 4n in there. Okay, so this now has all positive terms, which mean I, means, excuse me, I could use one of the tests that we discussed earlier that required all positive terms. Um, namely, we could use a comparison test, because I noticed that this series here is made up of this trig function, but then over 4 to the n, and we know the sum of 1 over 4 to the n would be geometric. Okay, so we're going to compare this to the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 4 to the n. Okay, thinking about the steps in our comparison test. And then we can say that this sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 4 to the n converges by the geometric series test, okay, since the r value that we're dealing with here would be 1 fourth, and that's less than 1. Okay, so do we want to use the limit comparison or the direct comparison test here? Um, well, just notice that if I tried the limit comparison test, I'd have the limit as n goes to infinity of the sine of 4n over 4 to the n divided by 1 over 4 to the n, so those 4 to the n's would cancel. But then I'd be looking at the limit as n goes to infinity of this absolute value of sine of 4n. Okay. Now sine oscillates between negative 1 and 1, so even as n goes to infinity here, okay, this absolute value has to be positive, but it's still going to be oscillating, in this case, between 0 and 1. So that limit doesn't exist. So the limit comparison test would not um, help us get a conclusion here. So we need to use just the regular, the direct 
comparison test. Okay, and, and show um, why this converges um, using inequalities. So notice that we know that our sine function, the absolute value of sine of 4n here, will always be less than or equal to 1 for all n, because that's as big as the sine function can be. So we can say that the absolute value of sine of 4n here divided by 4 to the n is less than or equal to 1 over 4 to the n. Okay, so then for our conclusion we can say so by this work that we just did in 2 and 3. Our sum from n equals 1 to infinity of sine of 4n over 4 to the n with the sine of 4n absolute value converges by, and I'm going to use DCT for direct comparison test. Okay, and then since um, this absolute value converges, this means the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of sine 4n over 4 to the n also converges. Because we know if the sum of the absolute value converges, that means the sum without the absolute value also converges. Okay, so we want to keep this um, technique in mind for situations where I have something that's not alternating, okay, but also not all positive. So I couldn't use a comparison test on this to begin with, but if I look at the sum of the absolute value, then I can try to use a comparison test. So this can be a helpful technique um, in those situations.